The movie begins with a large army of the Nazi approaching the city of Tulsa with ammo tanks, giving the people a last warning to surrender or they face annihilation. The citizens of Tulsa are seen hiding in the ruins of the building and are protected by the only few soldiers left of the Tulsa army. With their number, the soldiers knows they don't stand a chance against the powerful Nazi army of the New Reich, so they result to their only option of evaluating the civilians safely out of the city. A little girl from the group of fugitives sees a ray in the sky. Her mom is so excited knowing the freedom fighters have come to their rescue. One of the freedom fighters covered with a powerful ray of light scouts everywhere from the sky. Upon realizing how Nazi ammo tanks are surrounding the refugees, he takes action immediately by destroying the military equipment and giving people a chance to escape. This superhero is called the Ray, and he meets with his remaining members of the freedom fighters called Phantom Lady, Red Tornado, Black Condor, and Dalman. Ray tells them the purpose of the mission which is to making sure the refugees escape safely through the borders. And to do that, they begin to eliminate the Nazi army. Here we get to see what the Freedom Fighters are capable of when Phantom Lady uses Umbrakinesis powers on some of the soldiers, making it very easy for her and Dollman to finish them off. Red Tornado is a combat android with the ability to manipulate the surrounding air. Dollman can shrink so small that you find it so hard to see him. Black Condor cannot just fly at insane speed, but also has limited telepathic abilities that allow him to move objects with his thoughts. And finally their leader Ray, with the ability to manipulate light, creating constructs. Just when the Freedom Fighters seem to be gaining the upper hand against the Nazi army, a very powerful laser destroys the bridge the citizens are using as an escape route. That person is called the Overgirl, who shows up with two other members of the new rake called Dark Arrow and Blitzkrieg, to stop the Freedom Fighters once and for all. Blitzkrieg is just like the evil version The Flash, while same goes for Dark Arrow. During the fight, we find out that the main targets of these supervillains is Red Tornado, because he has a very important device they want, which is his brain. Overgirl deals with him with her incredible strength by pushing him deep underwater, and forcefully uses her laser to take the device from Tornado's head. Tornado is not ready to give up, but it is already over for him when his hands gets ripped out from his body. Luckily, Phantom Girl comes to his rescue. Black Condor holds off over Girl, while Ray takes Tornado far away as possible. Dark Arrow tries his best to shoot Black Condor, but was prevented by the Phantom Lady who, with the help of Dalman, immobilized the archer in his own trap. The dying Tornado tells Ray not to allow his brains from getting into the enemy's hands, and in other to do that, it must be destroyed. Tornado dies after giving Ray the device. As if that was not enough, the opponents started to attack again, and this time, the Freedom Fighters are no match for them. The Vibe, an ally of the Freedom Fighters, shows up to help them escape through his portal, but a laser from Overgirl hits Dalman which killed him instantly. Seeing the loss suffered, Phantom Lady and Black Condor goes to hold off the villains just to give Ray the chance to escape with a brain, but Ray unexpectedly gets attacked by Blitzkrieg, seriously wounding him. Vide knowing Red Tornado Brain is to be secured by any means possible, pushes Ray into the portal and he is taken to a different universe called Earth One. In Earth One, a guy called Terrell is in a meeting with a client at his desk. The woman tells him how she was evicted from her house a week after she rented the place, all because they found out she's a Muslim. Terrell promises to investigate, telling the woman not to pack yet, which made her so happy because she doesn't want to pull her kids out of school and everywhere else in the neighborhood is so expensive. Ray practices for a speech about the expansion of fair housing laws to the entrepreneurs. His friend Trujillo, knowing how nervous he is, tells him to relax. Jenny enters the room and informs her friends to get ready. Before Terrell had a good start to the speech, one of the entrepreneurs interrupts him, revealing that the company would close soon, banning Jenny, John, and Ray. The reason was property losses, which could lead to serious tax cuts. Therefore, it was only profitable to suspend operations. After the conference, Terrell and Trujillo went to a nearby bar to drown their sorrows in alcohol. Trujillo switches the topic after noticing one of the clients staring at his friend. He is surprised that Terrell hasn't yet told his parents that he is gay, but he still wanted the boy to have some fun by ordering him to speak to the client eyeing him. But Terrell wasn't ready to flirt for professional reasons, so he decided to head home. During Terrell dinner with his parents, his mom started asking about the girl he normally works with, Jenny, without realizing his actual secret. Terrell decides to finally reveal this secret on being gay to his parents, but being scared on how they might react to it quickly changes the subject, by informing them on how he was recently fired from the company he works. To his surprise, his father Robert is happy, considering the news as a blessing in disguise because he feels this is going to push his son into getting some real job, just like how his late brother lost his football scholarships and joined the Marines. 
After dinner, the boy went outside to talk to Trujillo on the phone, but the conversation is interrupted by a gigantic portal that appeared on his lawn, and a mysterious person emerges from it. This person is revealed to be the injured Ray from Earth X, and Terrell is so shocked that they both look alike. Looking at his injuries, Terrell intended to help, but Ray refuses. He handed him the brain of Red Tornado, then turned into solar energy and irradiated into Terrell cells, confusing the boy. Terrell immediately meets Trujillo and tells him everything about his incident, but as expected, Trujillo could not believe what he says, considering his story to be invented and unsupported by evidence. Even when Terrell reveals the secret core Ray gave him, his friend still didn't believe him until the device is accidentally activated. The friends gets afraid and are in distance away from the device when a hologram of the robot's stature appeared out of it. Red Tornado Hologram quickly realized that he was on Earth-1 and explains to the confused friends about how there are thousands of different realities in multiverse. He came from Earth-X and works with a band of freedom fighters who are against the Nazi forces from taking over the entire universe. His brain in their possession contains information vital to the resistance including the location of their base of operations. The new Reich led by Overgirl are searching for his brain and gives the both friends a task to destroy it before it falls into the enemy's hands. When the hologram of Red Tornado disappears, Terrell felt like such technology is too cool to be destroyed. A little argument arises between the friends, during which Terrell unknowingly activated his abilities and put on a costume. It was then that Trujillo realized that when a doppelganger from another world exploded, he passed on to Terrell his abilities. Terrell begins to put his powers to test but ended up destroying his friend's precious TV. Meanwhile, on the planet of Earth-X, Overgirl watched with pride as her world has now fallen under the rule of the new Rake. Her thoughts are interrupted by Dark Arrow and Blitzkrieg, who informed her about the death of Dalman in the further search for Phantom Lady, Black Condor, and Vibe. They also let her know that Ray ran away with the Red Tornado brain through the portal and they have no idea where he is now. Overgirl orders them to ready all their forces to attack the rest of the Freedom Fighters, willing to get Red Tornado Brain by any means possible. After a little talk, Turrell decided to learn how to control his powers. After exploring the sky for a while, he already discovered a new ability and showcases it to his friend after landing. He can control light to such an extent that he can make himself invisible. Meanwhile, at Star Labs in Central City, Caitlin notices a strange radiation from another world, so she called in Cisco to distract him from the show's marathon. Someone got into their world through a portal moments ago, but the person disappearing as soon as he arrives is what confuses them. Snow suddenly notices a radioactive energy, which is somehow comparable to a nuclear weapon moving all around the city. On the other hand, Trujillo returns Terrell to that bar, where he tries to convince his friend once again to make a move on the boy eyeing him. As the guy goes to get an extra drink, Terrell uses the opportunity to talk to him alone. He finds out the guy name is Jacob and started having a long discussion that led them both towards the park. Suddenly, the men heard a woman scream, immediately running towards it and noticing a man trying to rob a lady. Terrell tells Jacob to call for help, but immediately he goes away. Terrell uses his powers to take advantage of the situation and hung the criminal on a street lamp until the police shows up to arrest him. Quickly, Terrell is in all the newspapers and is considered as the new hero in the city. A Waves is about to destroy the ship of some travelers when Terrell shows up and rescues them, also saves a couple from a fatal accident, and rescues a mother and child from a burning building. Trujillo and Terrell get into another argument about why the Cortex device hasn't been destroyed yet. Terrell explains the device is indestructible, demonstrating it by using various tools to try and destroy it. Somewhere else in the city, we see two criminals robbing a bank when the alarm went off unexpectedly. The criminals are not bothered about it knowing it will take some time before the cops arrive. Terrell who has given himself a superhero name as the Ray shows up. He faces the criminals when they refuse to surrender. He didn't realize that there is a third thief from behind, and he is shot on his arms. Ray turns himself invisible and the two criminals mistakenly ended up killing themselves. As soon as he hears the cops outside, he quickly flies back home. On Earth-X, Vibe searches for any sign of the Ray's life in the multiverse. He gets attacked by the new Rake. He tries to escape but the Blitzkrieg catches up with him. They both get into an epic fight but Vibe uses his weapon to subdue the metahuman. Just when we think it's all over, Blitzkrieg attacks with doubled strength and aggression and finishes Vibe with an insanely powerful punch. The new Reich begins to find details about the whereabouts of the Ray on Vibe system, only to find out that the hero is on Earth-1. On the other hand, Ray is tending to his gunshot injury when his dad shows up at his room. Wanting to impress his father, he lies that he played basketball earlier and that is the reason for his injury. The father and son talk is interrupted by a call from Jacob, which Terrell goes out of the apartment to answer.
They both discuss on going out on a date, but Terrell suddenly gets shot by a tranquilizer dart, which makes him fall to the ground unconscious. He opens his eyes only to see two figures staring at him. Terrell activates his powers in defense asking them where he is. The flash and green arrow enters the room, and Terrell upon realizing who they are lets off his guard. The superheroes are impressed with Terrell's heroic activities, but cautions him about the damages he has been causing in the process. They decide to give him a proper training as a superhero, but it looks like the training will have to wait as Cisco just receives an alert concerning a recent attack in Detroit City. We see a gigantic robot demolishing the buildings of Detroit when the heroes arrives to stop it. As soon as Vixen arrives, they all immediately charges at the robot with every power they have. Vixen uses her totem to summon a gigantic whale to descend on the robot, but even with the amount of weight from the whale the robot isn't harmed, but instead responds to her attack by throwing her through several walls. According to their plan, Tara lures the robot to a trap set by Green Arrow, and the other heroes uses their powers to finish it off until its head is cut off. Few moments later, Terrell boyfriend breaks up with him at the bar for not being honest on who he really is. Green Arrow begins training Terrell on how to use his powers but realizes the boy isn't focused. Terrell tells Green Arrow everything bothering him including his breakup. He gets a good advice from Green Arrow to accept who he really is or he won't be fully able to control his powers. Terrell summons the courage to tell his parents about him being gay, but this is disrupted by an earthquake in his house. He hurries to his room only to meet Overgirl taking the Cortez device away. He snatches it from her and flies away, but she catches up with him in seconds. She beats him and almost killed him if not for his invisibility powers that saved him. But anyway, Overgirl isn't bothered as the device is with her once again. Trujillo returns home from work just to see Terrell waiting for him with bruises all over his face. Terrell apologizes to his friend for not listening to him in the first place. Now the device is in the wrong hands and thousands of lives is in danger. Trujillo encourages him not to give up. Back at home, Terrell finally reveals his gay secret to his parents, but it turns out they aren't surprised because they have been suspecting that about him. His parents isn't bothered as long as he is happy, they are too. Terrell meets Sisko at the Star Labs to help him get to Earth-X to regain the device from the Nazi, and refuses backups from Sisko because he doesn't want others getting hurt for his mistake. Terrell is teleported to Earth-X where he meets the surviving soldiers in the city, who takes him to the Freedom Fighters. Terrell apologizes to them for his carelessness and promises to help fight the new Reich in any way he can. The surviving soldiers are scared on waging another war with the Nazi because of their number, but with a motivational speech from Terrell, they are all encouraged to fight. The new Reich attacks their secret basement. Overall girl threaten them to surrender or they will kill Vibe. Terrell smartly frees Vibe with his powers and a final battle begins. The Nazi army appear to be loosing after they are ambushed by the surviving soldiers of Tulsa. Using every energy he has, Terrell overcomes the laser of Overgirl and defeats her. The rest of the Freedom Fighters also subdued her team members, while the Nazi army retreats out of fear. Phantom Lady tells them it's not yet over because there are still more members of the new Reich out there. Turrell refuses to return back to his universe. He made a terrible mistake and must fix it. He joins the Freedom Fighters, and that was how the movie ended. Thank you for watching guys. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.